Ladies and gentlemen, based on all the discussions I've had, including with an American journalist and people online, if Ukraine wins, their plan is to immediately resume Kiev's brutal ethnic cleansing campaign against the 10 million population in Donbas. Yet uh, ending that tragedy was Russia's single official reason for launching the military operation, as was stated in the globally televised speech of 24th February 2022. I therefore urge the international community to fully establish what the Allies' endgame is against this particular civilian population. Is Kiev fighting for democracy, or are they simply fighting to resume genocide, bigotry, and more blood and hate against those civilians again? Now, because nobody is giving the world any clear response to the question of what Kiev intends to do to the population of the regions it's fighting to regain, I decided to ask the question to artificial intelligence. Meta AI, to be specific. This is how I discovered that AI actually has a, a clearer assessment than anyone in the White House, Europe, or even NATO on this matter. I started by asking Meta AI, what would happen to ethnic Russians if Ukraine won? If Ukraine wins, the most likely outcome for the civilians in the annexed regions is uncertain, but potentially concerning. Given the Ukrainian government's stance on the conflict and the lack of mention of the ethnic Russian civilians in the Ukraine peace formula, there are fears that they may face. 1. Retribution. As you mentioned, under current Ukrainian law, those who supported the separatist movement are considered traitors and Russian collaborators. This could lead to arrests, trials, and potentially harsh punishments. 2. Discrimination. Ethnic Russians in Ukraine may face discrimination, marginalization, and exclusion from Ukrainian society, potentially leading to a lack of access to education, employment, and healthcare. 3. Displacement. Civilians may be forced to flee their homes and seek refuge in other parts of Ukraine or even in Russia, leading to a humanitarian crisis. 4. Human rights abuses. There is a risk of human rights abuses, including arbitrary detentions, torture, and extrajudicial killings, particularly if the Ukrainian military and security forces are involved in the reintegration of the annexed regions. It is essential for the international community to pressure Ukraine to ensure the protection of all civilians, regardless of their ethnicity or political beliefs, and to work towards a peaceful and inclusive resolution to the conflict. Now, if Russia loses, what are the risks to all the other ethnic Russian minorities living in other countries in the region? If Russia loses, the risks to ethnic Russian minorities living in other countries in the region could include 1. Increased nationalism. A defeated Russia could lead to a surge in nationalism in other countries, potentially resulting in discrimination and marginalization of ethnic Russian minorities. 2. Reduced influence. Russia's reduced influence in the region could leave ethnic Russian minorities vulnerable to persecution and discrimination, as they may no longer have the same level of protection and support from Moscow. 3. Retribution. Some countries might seek revenge against ethnic Russian minorities for Russia's actions, leading to violence, displacement, or forced assimilation. 4. Political scapegoating. Ethnic Russian minorities could be scapegoated for political purposes, leading to further marginalization and exclusion. 5. Human rights abuses. In the worst-case scenario, Ethnic Russian minorities might face human rights abuses, including violence, torture, and forced labor. 6. Displacement. Ethnic Russian minorities might be forced to flee their homes and seek refuge in Russia or other countries, leading to a humanitarian crisis. 7. Cultural suppression. There might be attempts to suppress Russian culture, language, and identity in these countries, erasing the heritage and traditions of ethnic Russian minorities. Countries with significant ethnic Russian minorities include 1. Ukraine 2. Kazakhstan 3. Belarus 4. Moldova 5. Georgia 6. Azerbaijan 7. Latvia 8. Estonia 9. Lithuania It is crucial for the international community to ensure the protection of ethnic Russian minorities and promote inclusive policies respecting their rights and cultural identities. It is clear that if we look beyond all the propaganda mishmash in the Western media and the direction that they want the conflict to go, 
i.e. a Ukraine victory, there is more darkness at the end of that tunnel than anyone has cared to think about. And that is why I would urge all countries to stop fueling the war until this matter of the people of Donbass, particularly their future, is clarified. Are Western leaders knowingly fighting towards more blood against those civilians or not? The answer is clearly yes here. So I urge these leaders, the international media and human rights organizations to put on the table all the answers to this critical issue of humanitarian concern regarding the breakaway regions. How have you held peace talks without discussing this issue, even amongst yourselves? Especially since the international community already knows that this particular population in Donbass does not want to be under Kiev and should therefore be left alone under Russian protection. Because no matter what anyone thinks, that is actually their sovereign will. There is reason to wonder why anyone would be disrespectful against this population's free choice. And I also wonder why anyone is attempting to invisibilize this population's right to peace and self-determination. Invisibilization is a strategy developed for oppressive purposes such as racism, xenophobia and religious sectarianism to render their victim invisible to public opinion and thus not show the oppressor's evil intent and evil actions against the victim. Invisibilization is the reason why most struggles for recognition have striven for political visibility. That is why invisibilization includes censorship of the victim's plight, censorship of their history, censorship of their immense suffering, and censorship of their legitimate opinion. Invisibilization is an oppressor's tactic against their victim's liberty, it is against justice, against truth, against freedom, and the, the dilemma that Western countries face is that invisibilization is always exclusively an act committed by the tyrants, and nothing makes this clearer than Western countries' invisibilization of their own refusal to respect the rights, the freedoms, and even the existence of the people of Donbass in their own land. Thank you.